Welcome into Deep Waters here on Pro Box TV. Well, this weekend, we have a five-on-five -five matchup featuring De Deontay Wilder, Dimitri Bivol, Philip Hergovic, so many great fighters. Also, in two weeks, Gervonta Davis and David Benavides. That one is June 15th, June 15th in Las Vegas. These two fighters. The strange thing is we haven't seen Gervonta Davis in over a year since his win over Ryan Garcia. Benavidez, we're talking about him mostly as the guy Canelo Alvarez won't fight. What is the future of these two fighters? Jimmy Smith, alongside, of course, we have Pauli Malinaji, Chris Algieri, and Showtime Sean Porter joining us via Zoom. When it comes to these two fighters, Benavidez, Gervonta Davis, what is that X factor that makes them so popular? Is it the knockouts? Is it the, their ability to stay in front of the camera, to stay in people's minds? What is it to you? I think with Davids, for sure, one of the things is the knockouts, you know. He's also got uh, some flair, some um, swagger, you know, uh, the culture, so to speak. You know, I think Javanta uh, is very popular uh, within his culture as well, and, 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 and people uh, uh, really vibe to him. That well, he's from the streets, from Baltimore. Yeah. He's very proud of that. Yeah. yeah. But, he, but he backs it up, you know. You, regardless of how vibable, if that's a word, you are, you still got to back it up in the ring. And, and Javante Davis has backed it up in the ring thus far, you know. And so, you know, it, it makes him continue to be popular and continue to make his star rise. I think with Benavidez, it's, you know, the destructive nature in which he wins his fights. Um, he's not a one-punch guy like Javante Davis, but he's destructive. He looks like he roll, runs you over like a truck every time he's beating these guys, right? So it's, you st and then of course you mix in the, oh, it's Canelo ducking him routine, and then all of a sudden, there's a curiosity about him. And so I think these are the two things that really make you very curious about these guys, and you start to wonder, who, you know, how are they going to keep looking? Are they going to keep looking like this? And do we have to keep demanding bigger and better fights for them because they keep looking so good against this level of opposition? They've got some pretty good op opposition in front of them on June 15th, though. You know, uh, Javante has Frank Martin and Benavides has Vazdik. All right, uh, Chris, that, that's something we've talked about is when the layoff, the, the amount of time it's, it's taken for Javante Davis to get back in there. He fought April of last year, knocked out Ryan Garcia. We talk about the biggest names in boxing. He should be there. He should be on everyone's list, but he didn't fight for the last year. How much does that hurt him and his marketability? Well, I mean, of course it hurts him staying out of the ring, but also we in his in his defense, he fought Hector Luis Garcia a few months before he fought Ryan Garcia. They were very, very close fights back to back. Um, so he wanted some time off. He had a big fight with Ryan Garcia, major, major televised event, huge pay-per-view numbers, obviously gets an emphatic win. Um, so he took some time, and then obviously there's always takes time to make fights happen. So being out of the, uh, out of the ring a year at 29 years old isn't great, but for, for John, Gervonta Davis, I don't think it hurts him as bad as some other guys because, and like you said earlier on earlier shows, Champ, he doesn't really complain about it. He goes out there and gets things done. I wanted to touch on that question you asked, like why are these two guys, guys, I'll tell you what it is. It's a theater of the unexpected, man. That's boxing. You don't know when those fights are going to end. With Gervonta, it's like you're literally watching with bated breath. All right, when's he going to knock this guy out? Because it's every fight. And then David Benavidez is like, all right, when's he going to step on the gas pedal and let those hands go and let everything fly? And it gets really exciting kind of waiting for that stuff to happen. Gervonta falls behind in fights. Doesn't look deterred at all. Goes out there. I'm going to find like you. He's bothered. He's, unbothered. he's completely unbothered. He's unbothered by being out of the ring. He's unbothered when he's losing rounds because he knows he's got that dynamite and he's waiting to deliver it. And I think Benavides is kind of similar. He's like, all right, yeah, I'm, I could fall behind. You could be getting good, be good in the beginning. I'm going to catch up to you late. And it, I think fans will really look forward to that and are interested in that, you know, that unexpected when's this fight going to end. Uh, Showtime, speaking of the theater of the unexpected, what are you expecting in these upcoming fights for both of these fighters? Yeah, I, I, you know, to speak to... Um... To, to, to speak to uh, Tank first, and, and also Frank, you know, one thing that that uh, that Chris did in the other show, he's like, you got to talk about both sides. Yeah. If you only talk about one side, there's only so many people that are interested in, in the possibilities of what could happen. The best thing that you could do for Tank Davis is talk about his opponent. Big up his opponent and make people feel like, yo, Tank is in jeopardy of losing. Tank is in jeopardy of not getting the knockout. Tank is in jeopardy of this fight not going exactly the way we all expect it to go. And I think that there's a lot of room for that to happen. Um, Frank Martin is fast. He's sharp. He's quick. He's very intuitive. He's a counterpuncher by nature. Guess what? Tank is a counterpuncher by nature. They're both southpaws. There's a lot more about this fight than just Tank Davis. And I, I, I get kind of annoyed that the promotions don't push both fighters and make this the event that it could be because this is going. This is a really intriguing matchup. And then, of course, with David Benavidez, again, the the, the point to to Chris's point, 
when is he going to step on the gas? When is he going to start to let go of those hands and do what he does fight after fight after fight? We don't know a lot about the Eastern European. We'd love to see you guys do some, some spotlights on both sides. It's necessary because in order for uh, David Benavidez to go up after this fight, reach that stardom that I feel he should already be at. I know Chris Art feels like he should already be there. You need to you need to give us something to talk about. Yeah. If we if we're not talking about his but opponent, Sean, we don't know it, much it, about his opponent. It, here's the the thing, win Sean. doesn't matter as much. Here's the thing, champ. Here's the thing. You 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 bring up a great point, but you're also bringing up inadvertently one of the problems in boxing. A lot of times these opponents, nobody knows who they are, bro. Like this, Chris <laughs> Champ just mentioned right before he fought Ryan Garcia, he fought Hector Luis Garcia. Who? What? Yeah. We can, we are, on pay per view? Really? What are we gonna talk about? You know what I mean? What do you want? Yeah. Frank Martin, you have an opportunity to do that. I agree with you. Frank Martin's actually a solid fighter. Uh, it's it's a really good opponent. It's a, it's a guy who deserves his respect, deserves to be talked about, and deserves to have a spotlight on him as well because he's he brings certain threats to the table against Javante Davis. But part of the problem we, that we're always talking about one side is because it's usually one side fighting. Where's the right. Reed's guy? <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to see that on pay-per-view. That's yeah. Barna Boxing's problem. So the more we can make solid matchups, the better we have an opportunity to spotlight both sides. And then when there's a winner, first of all, there's an excitement factor to the fight. And then when there's a winner, you really get appreciation for the winner in the, pro exactly. in the proper way, in the correct way. Exactly. And it's not just groupie status where you just want to see a guy, you know, beat a sacrificial lamb. And I think and uh, that's, that's, that, that's, it's, it's got to all come together. That's the concern for David Benavidez in this one. It's like we can't really appreciate this win because you didn't give us enough substance. Yeah. You didn't, you, you, you're feeding us, but we don't know what we're getting, so yeah. we can't be excited about it. And then once and he's well, done, it's like, well, oh, you well, know. I think that's why the Benavidez is in a co-main event right now. Vazdik has had some very good years, but Vazdik is also on a comeback trail at 36 years old. having two wins, low-key low wins. So while Vazdik was an excellent fighter a few years back, we don't know what kind of buzz that we're going to see. And that's, I think that's why Benavides has been demoted to, to the co-main event. In Benavides' defense, he's one of those guys that not everybody wants to fight, though. Well, what we'll do is we'll discuss both of the opponents, right, for Javante Davis and David Benavides when we come back. Wednesday Night Fights. Dynamite action on Wednesday Night Fights every other Wednesday on your boxing channel. On the next Wednesday Night Fights, June 5th. Vladimir Hernandez steps into the ring with Guido Emmanuel Schramm of Argentina. Live from the ProBox Event Center in Plant City. Get your tickets at ProBoxTV.com or take your chances at the door. Wednesday Night Fights. South American Showdown, Mexico versus Argentina. We have great fights every other Wednesday. It's going to be a great main event at 154 pounds. Speaking of competitive fights, Gervonta Davis in two weeks. Is that what he's headed for? Taking on Frank Martin, not just a tough fighter, skilled, undefeated, and a former sparring partner of Tank. When you look at it live dogs, do you consider Martin one in this fight? I do. I, I think this is a, a good opponent, a solid opponent, a deserving opponent. You know, I, I think also we, it, it gives us a chance when we see opponents like this, it gives us a chance to actually see where Tank is at as far as, you know, because Tank Davis is one of the better fighters in the sport, right? So we're always wondering, you know, guys like this, where on the pound for pound list they are? Do they belong on the pound for pound list? Where on the pound for pound list? And these kind of performances have to be gauged against these kind of fighters. You know, like, for example, we keep talking about that Joanna Davis is a guy who falls behind and he stays cool as a cucumber when he falls behind him and he's going he's gonna to knock you out. Well, you know what? He it does do that, but I also noticed that when his level of opposition was raised, when he fought Pitbull Cruz, he realized, okay, I'm not going to get this guy out of here. I'm going to have to outbox him, so let me get up on the scorecards so that I don't fall behind. So again, I got to see something about Javante Davis that I may have been wondering about, because otherwise I'm going to be wondering, man, every time this guy fights, he falls behind. What if, what, if, what if he's not able to get that knockout? Well, I noticed that. A guy like Frank Martin, to me, can bring out some of the better qualities in Javante Davis and see if he has them, how, at what level he has them, or if Frank Martin has where his qualities are, because we, we've been impressed with Frank Martin as well, and now he's stepping up to the moment of his career. Yeah, that's a criticism showtime that I want to ask you about, is that Tank, you know, uh, to Paulie's point, tends to fight down to his level of opposition, be a little too relaxed, a little too confident. Do you think with a year off that might be an issue in this fight? What are your thoughts on it? You know, I think that's just become a part of his style. I think he likes to uh, read you, gauge you, see what you want to do, and then he tries to turn it on from there. Also, got to mention that, again, he's a counterpuncher by nature. You're not used to seeing this kind of power 
from counter punches, which is why I think that he he's also he's always maybe miscalculated as not being that of. But uh, he's a counter puncher by nature, which also is why he tends to you know start a little slow or you know not as offensive in the first couple of rounds. Um, yeah, that's gonna happen in this one. Uh, Frank Martin is gonna come in and do him. He's gonna be first with the jab. He's gonna be waiting on that on that counter left and waiting on that check hook. Frank Martin is a classic uh, southpaw. Uh, most southpaws are counter punches by nature, and they tend to use that that check hook uh, uh, more than anything in fights. So expect that from from Frank, and then expect Tank to to eventually start trying to walk down Frank and bully him. And then I think we'll really find out what uh, what both these guys are about in this fight. Um, I think Frank is coming for this fight. I think Frank is coming to win. Um, if I if I really had to judge and gauge him mentally and emotionally on this fight, I think he's going to be locked in. But I do feel like there's some small um, uh, hesitancies uh, here and there for him in terms of how he wants this fight to go. I can see that coming from him. But, uh, you know, like they say, he who hesitates loses. Frank cannot afford to hesitate. He does that. He will get caught. He will lose. If he doesn't hesitate, this is going to be close until the end. Uh, I definitely give Frank a, a chance. I would say this is 60-40 Tank Davis. Chris, let's flip this around a little bit about that late start. One of the things about sports, not just combat sports, sports in general, the all-time greats, right, the Tom Brady's and Michael Jordan's, decide to win almost. It's almost like they're down 30 points and they go, okay, I'm putting 40 on you, and they do. That kind of idea, you talked about Benavides, you talked about Javante Davis, almost deciding, okay, now's the time I'm going to turn it up. Is it that kind of greatness to you, or can that catch up with you at a certain point? No, it can, it can certainly catch up. And uh, and I think that with Javante Davis, as much as a lot of us talk about him being a great fighter, we haven't seen it just yet because of the opposition. Listen, Frank Martin is a real op a real opponent. I mean, he is the biggest southpaw that he's fought thus, uh, thus far. The best southpaw he's fought this far, thus far as well. Biggest lightweight that he's fought uh, at this weight class. He's got the height advantage. He's physically strong. He's in great shape. He's uh, technically very, very sound. And then the southpaw, man, I think that's, gonna, that's really going to play a major factor in this fight. And, you know, Frank is going to come out there, and, and, and he'll probably start fast, take a lot of those early rounds. I agree with you, Sean. But, uh, you know, Tank does that thing where he's analyzing data. He stays really defensively sound. He's, he's catching these shots off. He's looking for his openings, waiting for that moment to pull that trigger. But with a guy like Frank Martin, that trigger might not, that, that, that uh, op opponent, um, opportunity might not present itself until way late in the fight. And by that time, is there going to be enough time to get, get him? Frank Martin's a very live dog in this fight. Very, very dangerous guy. Very, very dangerous fight. I'm really looking forward to seeing if Tank really can level up to that point of greatness and, and deal with a guy like Frank Martin. Pauly, when Chris is discussing that issue, it, it sounds to me like Lomachenko. He had a problem with that. We'd read guys. Tiafimo Lopez, he read him. By the time he started going, it was too late. He had given up too many rounds. Same thing arguably, arguably against Devin Haney. Against George Cambosis Jr., he started early, and it showed. Do we think we might see that kind of performance from Tank, perhaps? A little less read, a little more react? I think it also depends on the quality of opposition that's in front of you. I think, uh, you know, there is... An urgency, I think, to start a little quicker against a guy like Frank Martin because it, it may be a little bit more difficult to get yourself back into the fight against a guy who's that good. Uh, but then again, you got to also put the onus on Frank Martin as well. This is the biggest fight of his career. You know, he, he's used to being loose and boxing well. Maybe he's a little tight to start this fight. You start out tight against Javante Davis, you walk into a big shot and your night might end quickly. You know what I mean? So, you know, the, it also... Start it, tight it, and, and stiff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> start tight, stiff, which right. means, you know, you don't really see the shots coming the way you would normally because, you know, again, you've got to always keep the emotional aspect in mind. The biggest moment of your career, you're going to be a little bit tighter than you are for other fights where, where your normal level of relaxation has settles in much earlier. There's a possibility that the normal level of relaxation where Frank Martin starts out fights with is not there for a couple of rounds. Is that an opportunity for Tank to kind of flip the script early on in the fight? Because I think Tank also is going to probably feel like there's going to be a little bit of urgency to start a little faster. Yeah, showtime with Terrence Crawford fighting in August. We just had Inoue earlier on in the year. Usyk right now number one on a lot of pound-for-pound pound pound lists right now. Uh, do you think Javante Davis is talking about the kind of performance that will put him up in that rarefied air with this fight? Do you think that's on his mind? Um, you know what, it's hard to, it's really, I, I really don't know, you know, Tank strikes me as a guy, you know, uh, something that they said on the other show, uh, about fighters being businessmen and Tank strikes me as a guy who's, he's, he's kind of turning into becoming more of a businessman and put the right guy in front of me so I can do what I do. I don't care what the, what the, what the critics say. I don't care about the ranking. 
that doesn't determine how much money I'm taking and putting into the bank. And those, and, and we can already see he doesn't care much about the belts. I, I, if I had to, if I had to, to guess, I would say he doesn't care about being ranked in, in, in the, in the, in the pound for pound. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't strike me as a guy who's who's concerned about that. See, Sean, this is why I, I love that I work with the champs like Chris, like Sean, like 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 Tim Bradley, like the guy like Teddy Atlas, a like Hall of Fame trainer, because he, he put it so eloquently. I would have just been like, no. Oh. <laughs> you think Javante Davis is watching Pro Box TV right now? No. Javante Davis is not even going to watch boxing once he's retired. Javante Davis doesn't even care. Like, Javante Davis just shows up and be like, oh, whoever you put in front of me, I'll be ready. You know well, what I mean? Like, I, you know, whatever, he doesn't even care. He's got so much else going on. He's not watching this. He's not, you know, fans are watching this. Maybe his boys are watching this, but he's not watching this. He doesn't care. But that's the question is where does he go for not just the paydays, but the legacy fights? That is the next question that we'll deal with here on Deep Waters. Wednesday Night Fights. On the next Wednesday Night Fights, June 5th, Vladimir Hernandez takes on Guido Emmanuel Schramm. Wednesday Night Fights. Welcome back to Deep Waters here on Pro Box TV. Two fights in a row. We've had fight of the year candidates on Wednesday Night Fights. Pro Box TV, home for another one June 5th. Join us either live in Plant City or right here on Pro Box TV. But right now, we're talking about Gervonta Davis and his future. Now, it's great to be king. Will he be king at 135 or 140? 35, we have Vasily Lomachenko, Shakur Stevenson. Huge fights in the 135 pound division. But at 140, Isaac Pitbull Cruz, Devin Haney, Tiafimo Lopez. We have Matias waiting in the wings. Gentlemen, should he win? Paulie, he seems to you know, subscribe to the F you pay me uh, boxing model. What weight class do you think lends itself most to that? Where does he make the biggest paydays? I think, I think he's a bit small for 140. I mean, I know he's gone up and fought at higher weight classes before. I think there's a lot of good fights in 135 that could be made. I just hope he doesn't take another year off, you know, before he fights. That's, that's, that, I'm more wondering when will he fight again as opposed to, uh, you know, who he'll fight again. And there's a possibility that this fight could be good enough to make a rematch. And if that's the case, I don't want to wait a year for a rematch if the fight is good. I want to see the fight before the end of the year. Now, Chris, you pointed out last time around two fights back to back, of course, with the knockout of Ryan Garcia being the last one, that it's not a matter of, you know, he, he can be active. He's not always inactive all the time. He might go back to that schedule. Well, he stays in shape in between fights, too. Yeah. So even though he's been inactive, you know, if you follow him on social media, he's always, he stays lean, doesn't get really heavy in between fights. In terms of the weight class, I don't think we're going to see him at 140 unless he's picking and choosing the exact guys. Because he's putting, they, there's talks of him putting rehydration clauses at guys at 135. So for him to move up to 140, I just don't see that trying to take on the the big dogs at 140. Um, but there's a lot of great fights at 135. We, we're looking at a, a graphic right now with all the top dogs. I would like to see him in with any of those guys, except not really Baranchek. I don't really care much for that. But Shakur Stevenson, Vesley Lomachenko, they're all, absolutely. They're all top-ranked guys, though. They're exactly. And so so yeah. now we get into the issue of promotion versus promotion. That becomes very, very difficult. But, hey, we're in the era of five-on-five five versus five where promoters are fighting each other. So we, we maybe we can make actually make these fights happen. Um, thank you, Turkey al al Plus. For making these kind of fights happen, so PBC's got a PBC has a very poor record against top rank. Maybe Javante can get get one back for them. Yeah, yeah, it's certainly a possibility. But I want to ask you, Showtime, do you think his power translates at 140 pounds? You talk about his power as a counter puncher, extremely rare. Certain guys that power translates, other guys it doesn't. What do you think about Javante Davis? Yeah, you know, I, I shout out my podcast, the Portaway Podcast. We talked about his power one time, and I said I alluded to his power as being generational power. And what I mean by that is he has a power at 135 that is very rarely seen. And I think that it does translate at 140. We saw what he did against Mario Barrios. Again, we do have to understand the levels there. And, and Paulie, there's a fight that you missed. Mario Barrios, I think that we could talk about that fight. It's point. because Mario was, was a bigger guy. 140, the record, the list goes on. Rehydration laws on that one, too, though. But Mario yeah. also was oh, very improving true. at that point. Re Mario, yeah, re rehydration laws on that one. Mario, Mario was also and true. Mario fought at 130 at one time. Very, very tall for 130. 130, 135, 140. Now he's at 47. And, Sh and Sean, I'm gonna, you missed an opportunity there. Generational power, I thought you were going to say something like, I mean, uh, uh, with generational power, I thought you were going to say something like uh, his kids going to feel it. His kid, the, your kids' kids are going to feel it. <laughs> he, hits you, he hits you so hard, your unborn kids are going to feel it. That's I, thought, good. I thought that's what you were talking about, generational power. <laughs> I, I, I like it, what yeah, you well. said earlier. You, you alluded to... Uh, uh, you didn't call it uh, power. You called it... You called it... What did you say? You said brain... 
Rattling? I don't know. I, I just talk, man. I don't know what I say. <laughs> I forget. I, I like, forget a minute later. Sean, he drinks espressos right before he gets in here. Yeah, so that, that's like, the espresso I'm talking. Whatever, you no, know, what, whatever label you put on power, Javante Davis has it. Now yes. let's go with another crazy idea. Turkey Alashita has talked about Bud Crawford taking on Canelo Alvarez. That's a huge jump in weight class. So is Inouye versus Tank. That is a yeah. possibility that, once again, Turkey al has talked about that kind of dream fight out of the realm of possibility to you. Yes, so I'm throwing that out the window. Wow. Because, look, we're looking at... You looked right at me when you did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, right out, out the, the window. window. Okay. That, that, okay. I, know, I know people are talking about this fight. I know people that actually matter are talking about this right. fight. I don't see this fight happening. Inouye's already on his fifth weight class, and now he's yeah. going to jump three more and fight yeah. a guy who's going to have to come down more, yeah. which I don't know if Tank really wants to come down to 130. Because that that's where that fight would have to happen. And in a way, just move to 22. He's going to go, he's going to skip over 26, go right to 30 yeah. and fight a guy coming down who'd fought at 140. And if it's at 130, does in a way have the option to give him a rehydration clause? You know, see, that's the thing, too. I, I don't know. You know, they, they, they have that thing where in gambling, they call it a sucker's bet, where it looks good, but you're really just getting sucked in. This is a sucker's fight. You know, like, when you, you, you look at it, it looks good on paper, a lot of big names. Then you look at it really closely through the microscope, and the weight classes are very, very different. I mean, this is weight classes like are said, real, guys. five weight class difference with, in a way, he's been up already. Javante, is, he bottoms out at 130, 135. You know, like he's, it'd be a very massive. I don't even difference. think we see Inouye past 26. It's just, it's he's already getting dropped at 26. But no, know? he's getting dropped at 22. Yeah, it's 22. He's at 22 right now. How much do you want the guy to go up for, bro? Well, well, then let's go up in weight class to 168 pounds. Talk about it on the same card. That's right, David Benavides. Where is he without Canelo? Does it elevate him? We'll discuss it when we come back. Welcome back into Deep Waters here on Pro Box TV. Well, let's not forget David Benavidez doesn't need Canelo for his next fight. All right, that's up against Vosdick, of course, a respected fighter at 168 pounds and lost to Bitter Biev, who hits like he stole something from him. My question for you, gentlemen, Canelo talking about Benavidez the way he has. The problem is, does it make every fight leading up to perhaps Canelo a holding pattern kind of fight? Is that the fight fans are waiting for? Paulie, what do you think? I don't know. I, I mean, I think true boxing fans would like to see it um, because Benavidez, a guy that good in that weight class, deserves a shot at a world title. So it's more so. I, I've said plenty of times that I don't even think the fight's a good fight. I think Benavidez runs him over like a truck. But if he's not going to get the title shot, then you got to make the fight against Canelo to give him the title shot. Otherwise, you strip Canelo and, and Benavidez gets world title fights and then he can start making title defenses and so on and so forth, which increases your legacy, you know? Um, otherwise, yeah, I mean, it, it's sort of holding pattern fights. I mean, if he looks, he's in a, between a rock and a hard place. If he looks too good, Canelo's still not going to fight him. If he looks bad in one fight or he looks a little bit susceptible, then Canelo's fan bandwagon, uh, the, 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 the triple C's are going to start jumping around and saying, oh, he doesn't look good. He doesn't deserve a Canelo fight. So he's really between a rock and a hard place. What do you think, Chris? Holding pattern? I mean, I don't think so. I don't think they've been... David Benavides moves that way. He's always going to keep that door open because it's massive, massive money and obviously a huge opportunity. Um, but, you know, honestly, this, this is a weighty issue, pun intended. He, now he's fighting at 175. He's a big guy. Are we really going to see him back down at 168 again? He says he can do it. Body might say something different. Sean, what are your thoughts, my man? I, I agree with both these guys. I don't think we ever see this fight. I think it's a fight that Canelo Alvarez just simply doesn't want. Um, this is the only fight that anybody wants at 168 if you're talking about Canelo Alvarez or David Benavidez. I do believe that David could still make 168. I think that moving up to 175, he might be just trying might be just trying to conquer something else because he can't get what he wants to conquer at 168. So I think he's just But they have to tough something. fights coming. Right. That is the difference. Both of them very tough fights in two weeks. Will the outcome be? We'll discuss it here. We'll see you next time.